psychedelic posters, plein air painter Neil Sherman, a grand cabaret, and too many banjos. Now that's a playlist. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Four accomplished musicians and two banjos come together for a fine fusion of funk and bluegrass. Please welcome Too Many Banjos. We'll hear more from the band and get to know the players in just a bit. And today's musicians may be inspired by an exhibit of rock posters on display at the Tweed Museum. Psychedelic Signatures features the work of five notable artists that visualized the music of the late 60s. These are old concert posters between 1966 and uh, about 1969, San Francisco. It's kind of the real psychedelic kind of artwork. It's Salvador Dali, it's, it's that era, and, but it's the real, you know, there's a real event behind each of these posters and there's real memories for people. Well, my name is Andrew Olson. Um, this is, these are my, kind of my artwork for my walls. Some people go to Target and they buy, you know, a cheap print or something and my wife and I decided that we would go out and we would find, you know, real art for our walls that we would want to look at all the time. There's definitely certain artists that we really like, or that we kind of seek out, like Lee Conklin I really like. Um, I think he kind of has that kind of dolly quality where he has kind of pictures within pictures and things that you can really kind of stare at and more things kind of come to the view. Probably that's my favorite here. Um, so this is the Bonnie McLean one with the doors and the yard birds. So this is like the Summer of Love, 1967. I just always think it's really a beautiful image. Um, you know, it's kind of cool with the complementary colors, the blue and the orange. Here you also have, you know, Wes Wilson, very early uh, Jefferson Airplane, the third concert ever at the Fillmore. They didn't even fill the whole page, and he's still kind of coming up with his lettering that he, he then masters kind of uh, about a year later. 
the whole movement was kind of going against the norm and going against these societal constraints that they had grown up with, with you know the 50s and everything kind of being normalized. And I think the 60s is really about breaking free of that. The posters were kind of the art that reflected that. The uh, artists would kind of outdo each other and try to really force you to look at the poster and look into it. And that was a part of kind of the whole experience of the music and the art itself. You know, nowadays it's just you download music and it's just your kind of disposable music where you just pay a dollar for the one song. And um, this art really shows that music and art can come together to create really kind of an experience. I hope people take away kind of the, the art side of music. It's great to be able to share it with the local community and hopefully a lot of people from around here will come up and you know, see this artwork. There's an opening night reception for the exhibit at the Tweed Museum Thursday, or Tuesday night, July 5th from 4 to 6. Now theater fans have lots to look forward to this summer, including an ambitious staging of Cabaret at the Fitger Spirit of the North Theater here in Duluth. Two cast members are in the studio tonight to fill us in, Jennifer Medill Hagen yes. and Peter Frohlingsdorf. Welcome to the playlist. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to have you. Okay, Cabaret, it's a pretty big classic. Tell me the story of Cabaret. Uh, the story is based uh, around t a true events. Um, it's about a young man who goes uh, to Berlin, Germany, or finds himself in Berlin, and he is working on the next great novel, and goes to the Kit Kat Club and runs into Sally Bowles in the, just at the start of the Nazi Revolution. So what role do you play, the young journeying? I is? am the writer, yep, I'm the American going over, Clifford Bradshaw. Okay, and Jennifer? Sally Bowles. And what kind of character is Sally? Oh, Sally Bowles is very colorful. I'm English, darling. <laughs> and um, I just love life, and I loved, and I'm a dancer in the cabaret. And I meet him and try to swoon him and <laughs> talk him into everything. <laughs> Somehow that's perfect for you, yes. because in real life you also <laughs> teach. I yes? do, I do. I own Medill Performing Arts Center teach dance and musical theater. And it's really fun to see that part of you as well on stage. And Thank as you. the choreographer of Cabaret as well, yes. you have a really big job. I do, I do. It's been uh, stressful a little bit on that end because I've also had to learn the accent as well. So lines, accent, choreography. Sounds but I'm having, a, I'm having a great time with choreography though. It's been a lot of fun. I um, actually worked on Bob Fosse in New York, so like different pieces. So, but I didn't go that style completely. It's okay. just kind of a mix of it. So, All right. well, we had a chance to watch you guys doing a little tweaking, a little work on the dance moves, and we're going to take a look at that now and talk some more. All right, here we go. You ready? Okay, and go. Well, I don't mind the heights. Yeah, and then coming down the stairway too. I kind of, I kind of skip the steps. <laughs> My name is Dustin Hagen, and um, in, I play the MC in Cabaret. 14 carat yacht, boom, ball change, pull back, ball change, pull back, stomp, step, to pull, ball change, to pull, cross step, up. She kicks you into gear, definitely. Um, I don't have a strong dance background, so it's definitely, definitely a lot of work. And I think it's a lot of work even for dancers. Yacht, chug, ball change, ball change. I'm Derek Williams. I play the role of Victor and a sailor in the production of Cabaret. Derek! I'm kind of running the show within the show. Um, and I just I introduce numbers. I'm up there singing and dancing and, and um, just out of breath the whole time. <laughs> So ladies, so once you're done with mine here, you can actually leave early. Ladies, it's so nice to work with with people that that know what they're doing, and and just can bring across a great show, and are a lot of fun too. I think everyone involved in this project is awesome, and we're gonna give you a good show. Very good. I like that you're an encur you're encouraging. Very good. You're telling them, okay, you're making it. So how do you prepare? How how hard do you work these folks? Oh, I work everyone very hard. <laughs> I figure just keep going as much as they can. But to prepare for it, you know, I, I could get inspired at six o'clock in the morning and wake up to my notebook and go, oh, and you know, and then see things a couple times and maybe want to revamp it. But this cast has been great because I did actually get to have five of the dancers from my studio that 
So they, you know, they know how I work, and the other ones are just kind of like, okay, we'll just do it. <laughs> no, we've been talking about this for six months. Yeah. So you've been working for six months on the dances. Yeah. Well. In your head. Yeah, in my head. Yeah. I've known this music. For this music is great. The music yeah. is great, and it's so hard not to be able to hear it and share that. Yes. You know, so you yes. know, and and also in the clip, you don't get to see what the staging and the costume is going to be like. So how and they're much? They're amazing. Cheryl, our dire our director put so much time and work into the costuming and they're just gorgeous. We have costumes from UMD, from Minneapolis. Yeah. It's, they're being pulled from everywhere. Very cool. And a full orchestra on set. Yes, on stage. Eight, piece eight piece orchestra piece. on, yeah. Incredible. So how does it feel to be doing this scale of a production on a, a you know, there's no place to hide on that stage. Oh, it's a Vickers challenge. has been wonderful though. We've been able to create some more levels on the stage and kind of revamp how to use the space and they've allowed us to do that. So. Thank you to Fitgers too. It's been it's really nice. I love that theater. I grew up in that theater, doing theater for the young a long time ago. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I know that it, there's only 140 seats in that theater, yes. so if you're going to get your tickets, you tickets better get them. Tickets are selling fast. Yeah, isn't that awesome? It's exciting. Well, I'm going to tell you to both break a leg in the best way to say that. <laughs> Thank and, you. And I hope it's a great production. Thank I know you. it, it really already is. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you Thanks. so much. All right. Well, Cabaret opens two weeks, two weeks from tonight, Thursday, July 14th. The show runs Thursday through Saturday for three weeks, and tickets are available online or by phone. Now, for Neil Sherman, it's all about place, capturing the right place in the right light. He gives his paintings an immediacy and a feeling that you're there, experiencing the moment with them. His surroundings in Grand Marais provide lots of options. Uh, looking down the shore, trying to get the Sawtooth Mountains in, and what I liked, you know, it's changed a little bit now, but the cloud formations were really kind of cool early, earlier in the day. It's different now, but it's still pretty, so I'll just use that and see what happens. Oftentimes the, cha the light will change and it even gets more beautiful than when you were started, so that's kind of the advantage of, you know, standing in one place for three hours. <laughs> You know, if you're painting in a kind of a touristy spot and people will drive up and they'll hop out of their car and they'll snap a picture and hop back in their car and drive away. <laughs> you don't really get a sense of that so much, I think. It's kind of a classic, you know, Grand Marais spot with the view of the, of the harbor and the mountains and stuff, so. My name is Neil Sherman and uh, I'm a plein air painter, which is, uh, plein air is French for outside or open air. So I paint outside primarily and then I'll paint in the studio. Yeah, this is actually up in the same spot. That's the harbor there looking down. And then this was the view that I was, you know, different day that I was painting this morning. So that really speaks to the, just the, the change in the lighting and stuff. You know, the view can be, the view is going to be the same pretty much because there's not a lot of room to move around to get a different view, but the light changes, and that's what makes it really, really exciting. My ultimate goal is to like to hike the whole length of the Superior Hiking Trail with my paints and just do paintings along the way. Not only like some of the more big vista views, but then like the intimate views that people maybe just take for granted when you're hiking, you know, bridge or something like that. This is the Temperance River. That was a spot, one of those spots that really struck me as like, oh, that's really cool, I gotta paint that. And it turned out great. I like, I really liked it a lot. Usually I, what determines paintings for me is if I'm driving around or walking around and something just strikes me as really interesting, like, wow, that's cool. And then uh, I'll stop and do a painting of that. So oftentimes it's a feeling, like I can just look at it and I get excited about it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain when, like, people often ask, you know, when do you know when a painting is done? And I mean, you can't say when, when it's, you know, when I have this much paint on there. And <laughs> it's just a, it's just a feeling you get. And after a while, you learn to trust that feeling that okay, this is done. You know, don't touch it anymore. <laughs> I think good art is something that makes the maker or the creator or the painter. Uh, feel good and then I think it also makes the user or the viewer feel good.
Neil rents studio space from the Grand Marais Art Colony and welcomes visitors year-round. He's also among the Art Colony artists who will have work on display during the Grand Marais Art Festival July 9th and 10th. 70 artists will have booths set up downtown for the weekend, and it kicks off with an evening soiree at the Sievertson Gallery on Friday night. There's more information on the Art Colony's website. Now, since this is the final show of our second season, it's a great time to let us know about creative people we've missed. Artists, theater groups, music groups, people we should feature in the future. To make suggestions for the playlist, find links and details on the pieces you see in the show, check out our website, theplaylistonline.org. You can catch episodes and segments anytime online. In our gallery tonight, the paintings of Sarah Moen Slotness. She's a Duluth native with a creative spirit, and we're glad to have her work on the playlist tonight. And we'd like to thank all of the artists and galleries who filled our playlist gallery throughout the year. There are some amazing photo albums on our Facebook page to enjoy. And now, without further ado, please welcome back Too Many Banjos. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sneaking in on the side. Please do. Mark Gartman, awesome music. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks very much for having us. Will you introduce your band? Absolutely. We have Dave Carroll on, on banjo and vocals, Brian Lefty Johnson on percussion and vocals, and Mr. Matthew G. Mobley on the upright bass. 
Fantastic. You sound so great together. Thank that's you. That's really cool. Okay, the, that last song was called Dorothy Whitaker. Well, right? that's true. Okay, so who is Dorothy Whitaker? Dorothy Whitaker is a name that came to my brain one night for no reason at all. It just appeared in my brain, Dorothy Whitaker. I actually looked on the Internet to see if there was something like had, you know, something from my past or something, but there was nothing that I could find. So it's just a, a song. And you write the songs, and how do they come together? Is it like that? It's like this is the day that it's just going to come together. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's how the pieces come together. I mean, I, I come up. That was something that that sort of rhythm I, w I heard in my head for a while. And we fooled around with it as a band for a, a while, I think, before we sort of really understood how we were going to tackle it. So it starts as one thing, but it really becomes something else when, when everybody gets involved. Oh, and speaking of everybody getting involved, you're in at least two bands, correct? True, probably. Dave, you have another band that you're in mm -hmm. that keeps you a little busy. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And Brian, you have another band? I've been called to many occasions. Yeah, and Matt, you have a couple of other bands. So how do you guys find time to get together and, and rehearse and, and work on music? That's a, that's a good question. Um, we're not... A bit, not that not that I uh, think other bands should do this, but we don't we don't practice a lot. Um, we we play so much, we play so many shows together. We're, we're always doing shows that um, I have find that found that the way that you learn a song on stage is a very different relationship to the song as opposed to learning it in your friend's you know living room. And uh, I uh, it's you know we could practice, we could have more time to practice, but it just it seems to be working find the way it is so plus everyone's schedule is really busy like you said so we we make do we do the best we can it, it was fun to watch you just even in rehearsal the the level of musicianship between the four of you is really fun so thank you it's kindly. working don't change it thank you kindly <laughs> but do tell me about this instrument because this isn't a banjo sure. <laughs> that was right you didn't yeah this is called a bazooki it's an irish instrument there's also a greek version of it but i this is the irish version um and let's see, it's eight strings, so it's two, four, four double strings. And uh, I think it's supposedly normally tuned like a mandolin, but I, I tune it in open C, uh, just because it's just, you can play more strings open, just sounds nicer. And uh, yeah, it was a gift from my father many years ago. I didn't play it for a while, and then I just started playing it a lot. And do you play it much different than a banjo? Is it a whole different animal? Uh, it's the same idea. The chords and stuff are different, um, but it's it's the same in that it's it's the same motion on my hands and my fingers and slightly different muscle memory. But it's 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 not like jumping between, you know, like a tuba or something like that. You know, it's it's they're similar. They're similar for sure. All right. Tell me a little bit about recordings that might be out there and might be coming out. Sure. Um, we have one record with the, the the song that we start off with, the blush song. That's on a record we have out now. Uh, which you can get online, I guess. And then uh, the one, the Dorothy Whitaker song we just played is unreleased, but we hope to record it uh, at the end of the summer. And what's coming up? What's your last song? And the last song we're going to do will be on banjo, and that's uh, sort of a classic Too Many Banjo tracks, which is, I think, the, I think it's, it's fun to go back and forth between the, the two. It sort of makes it interesting. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's from our third record. Too Many Banjos has five CDs, so it's yeah. on the third. It keeps everybody on their toes, too, yes. if you're moving back and forth. And True. Um, last question for yes. you. It's a really hard one. When Let's do I it. get to see you perform again? That's a very easy question to answer. You and all our friends can come see us at uh, Lake Avenue Cafe tomorrow night, Friday night at 10 o'clock. Lake Avenue Cafe in Canal Park, Duluth. And uh, it's a cool new venue. It's a cool space, cool restaurant. And we'll be there tomorrow night, Friday night at 10. Okay. And then road trip. And then we're off to uh, <laughs> South Dakota, where we'll use, unfortunately, we won't be here. We'll be in South Dakota for July 4th. Well, I hope they have good fireworks for you. I'm sure, I'm sure they do. Yeah. I'm sure they have great ones. Yeah. And thank you guys so much for making time in your, in your calendar and your schedule. It's a great way to wrap up the playlist. Thank you for having us. It's an honor. Yeah, it's a thank pleasure. You. We're looking forward to your last song. Now, remember, everybody, thanks for watching. And I really do hope you have a great summer. And remember to go out and support live local art. And that's it for the last song. It's up to you guys. Thank you. I won't sit here and get bashed. <laughs>
Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by viewers like you.